Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to one more game of Akiba Rubinstein. And if you follow the saga, then you know in Barman 1905, Akiba Rubinstein just won the tournament and he got his master title. So he got uh, famous in the chess world and a lot of players wanted to play with him. So, for example, Jacques Mises visited Łódź, the chess center in Eastern Europe, where Akiba Rubinstein lived and they play the match. Uh, we know ab about the three games and all three games were won by Akiba Rubinstein and it was pretty uh, surprising as Jacques Mises was a very strong um, attacking player and his ranking um, at that time was 2639 according to chess metrics and it gave him 13 uh, place in the world so definitely strong player uh, he was 40 years old at that time but that was not end of his career you know uh, jacques mises was known of his uh, professional career which lasted 64 years so uh, this is the record that still stands now his durability was attributed to his belief in physical fitness and so for example he engaged in daily swims until almost until he died when he was 89 years old but 64 years of a professional chess career that's pretty impressive um, thing so when he was 40 he was in peak of his career as in 1907 just two years later uh, he won the tournament in vienna and got the third place in ostend so um definitely uh, that was big surprise that Akiba Rubinstein managed to win without, you know, uh, bigger issues um, uh, with Jacques Mises. Uh, okay, and Jacques Mises play as black. And Akiba Rubinstein, 23 years old at that time, and his ranking after the Barman tournament, 2539. So definitely Jacques was the favorite of his game okay but let's jump uh, on the board and see what just happened rubinstein open with d4 we have d5 by mises c4 e6 so uh, queen's gambit declined knight c3 knight f6 bishop g5 c6 knight f3 knight bd7 e3 so pretty standard so far and here we have queen a5 and it's called the Cambridge Springs variation. It was played first time in 1892 by Emmanuel Lasker, but in 1904, just one year before uh, this match, uh, it was played in the tournament in uh, Cambridge Springs in Pennsylvania in USA and by many players so it became quite fashionable at that time so Jacques Mises wanted to check uh, if Rubinstein knows you know all the lines um, so he brought it to uh, Eastern Europe as well and Rubinstein um, uh, answered knight d2 and it was actually in main line so he was definitely prepared uh, at that time, he didn't have internet, of course, um, but the, a lot of um, newspapers, chess and newspapers, uh, some journals wrote about um, the most famous tournament in the world. So definitely he was well prepared. Now, um, what's the idea here? First, uh, this bishop and uh, don't pin the the knight anymore the, the, it was pin here when queen moves to a5 there is no more pin and that means this bishop can come to b4 and this knight can come to e4 and all of these um, pieces would uh, you know put a lot of pressure on c3 so this diagonal uh, would be very very dangerous um, for white so white has to play something so as i said knight d2 is the main line but also white could play uh, c takes on d5 so um, they would just you know solve the center problem and after knight on d5 queen d2 bishop b4 and for example rook c1 the game would continue for example h6 bishop h4 and c5 c5 uh it's the it's the popular line here so um, so yeah that, that that the game would continue for example this way 
or bishop f6 as this bishop i will show you the trap later um, this bishop can be vulnerable have to watch out and uh, so bishop f6 could be played also and after knight f6 and knight d2 uh, bishop b4 it's possible to play queen c2 um, and then bishop d3 and normally it's uh, not really possible play bishop d3 so after c5 it would be some kind of tarash defense uh, similar structures and that that could be you know transposed this way uh, however knight d2 was played by rubinstein and here bishop b4 by Mises, queen c2 and i will show you how black could set up the trap so for example a uh, castle by black and if white play bishop on d3 watch what would happen d takes on c4 with attack on the bishop but also this di discover attack on the hanging piece on g5 because this knight is no longer on f3 so um that's of course dangerous after bishop takes on f6 c takes on d3 winning the piece so black would of course win so uh, white have to be very careful however here mises just play knight on e4 it's still dangerous for this bishop but um not not so fancy tricks um uh, and here Rubinstein just play knight d on e4 take the uh, the knight we have d takes on e4 and now as you see this bishop is under attack so bishop h4 and here we have the castle by Mises bishop e2 and preparing also for castle and here we have f5 so Mises defend the and the pawn on e4 uh, and here we have castle by rubinstein as well and as you remember mises uh, prefer to play open um, open games uh, you know he was from the 19th century romantic era player definitely strong one so he play e5 uh, and Rubin and nowadays sometimes this system is still played but it's better for white especially after c5 and then e takes on d4 e takes on d4 and after exchanging the white would have uh, wouldn't have any problems uh, and would just stand better uh, however rubinstein play a3 which is also okay so he forced actually this bishop to exchange and here we have queen on c3 and here mises as as i told you he's a you know attacking player wanted to keep the queen on the board so he played queen on c7 uh, however exchanging would be uh, much stronger after b takes on c3 and knight b6 the black would have some pressure on um, on c4 uh, and if the c4 is pushed then this knight would find a um, very nice square on the on the d5 um, so for example a4 but then bishop e6 so still attacking uh, now double attack on c4 so uh, rook f on b1 could be played and then you know uh, keeping the pressure on um, b7 so that would be the continuation which would make sense for both sides however uh, Mises play queen on c7 that's um, a pretty passive move and here Rubinstein plays c5 so he just close the position here on the queen side and want to you know improve the position of his pieces right now and here Mises play another inaccuracy he play rook on e8 uh, so defending the um, uh, e5 uh, pawn but probably better was uh, taking on d4 and after check and moving to h8 white would probably take on d4 and then after knight f6 b4 consolidating the queen side uh, black would just play bishop e6 and position would be would be quite okay for both sides and also um, black would have the possibility of you know playing on bishop on d5 closing the position if needed 
uh, creating some uh, some tactics maybe on the king side that would be pretty pretty okay for him however he play rook on e8 and here we have rook a on d1 by rubinstein and now he takes on d4 and here we have rook takes on d4 so actually rubinstein you know uh, can double the rooks with tempo so um not really great uh, by mises and here we have a uh, position of black is becoming more and more difficult it doesn't seem yet um, but now black has problems with development so probably knight f8 could be the the option and after bishop on g3 attacking the queen queen could go to e7 b4 consolidating bishop e6 and for example bishop on d6 queen f6 and the game could continue white would have advantage of course but at least black could develop the pieces however mises play queen on e5 so centralizing the queen um but this actually was very very bad move as rubinstein could uh, you know win the piece he didn't do that he play more positional he didn't want to go for some complicated lines and he was also playing a strong move but you know feel free to pause the video and try to win um, the piece as white while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so uh if you've played bishop on g3 then congratulations um you are a strong positional player akiba rubinstein played this move uh it's not the strongest move um uh, here but if you want to you know play tactical chess bishop on c4 could be very strong and of course uh, king can't move to f8 because that would be deadly uh, after bishop on g3 queen f6 and bishop d6 with check the the rook would fall and also another pieces would join so um very bad situation for black but if playing a uh, slightly better much better actually king on h8 it's still uh, impossible rook f on d1 so now attacking the the knight and if knight falls then uh, white of course winning the the one piece so queen c7 of course f4 can be played and then white just winning the the piece so queen c7 and now we would have this bishop on f7 so that was in, in important to play bishop on c4 first and now bishop on f7 rook f8 and now bishop g3 attacking the queen and now if queen moves on d8 for example uh, then we would have bishop on e6 attacking this knight the knight is pinned so can't move and also can't be defended that would be only defense but then that losing the rook so uh, it's impossible so now we have three attackers so um, that would be the winning the piece so not an option here but knight also can't move if the knight move for example on um on e5 uh, then we would have bishop on b3 so bishop move back and here uh, now there is the threat of attacking this knight so for example defend the knight but it's still rook d6 uh, and now if a queen defend uh, the knight it doesn't work because after exchange uh, all the pieces here we would have checkmate on d8 because the weakness of the eight rank so uh, that would be impossible so the knight could move somewhere but if knight moves for example to uh, f7 attacking the the rook then we would have rook on f6 very strong move because now we have discovered attack on the queen so f4 bishop f4 queen e7 and now just rook on f7 of course it's defended so winning the piece and the game 
and if knights go to another square like for example g4 then simply h3 and then now this knight has to move somewhere and if moving on the sixth rank of course the the rook takes it with discover attack so if you found um bishop on c4 with check and uh, you found how to win the piece the congratulations akiba rubinstein didn't play this move he play bishop on g3 which is a um, more positional move improving the position of his bishop and we have queen on f6 by Mises, rook f on d1 so now white as you see developed all the pieces uh, so that's a huge advantage and black want to you know develop the last pieces as well so we have knight on f8 and queen b3 with check and here Mises could play queen on f7 probably it would be better than the move he played and after bishop on c4 bishop e6 and exchanging the bishops then for example bishop d6 uh, rook f6 and white has to decide what to do with the queen exchanging uh, gives them nothing actually uh, so they would have to move it somewhere and find a new plan how to play this game uh, so that would be probably some chance for black to you know try to draw the game but still white has uh, advantage their pieces are more active of course so um would be very difficult for um, black to play however king h8 was played and now we have bishop on c4 uh, and knight on e6 attacking the rook so rubinstein exchange um, his bishop for this um, knight and now uh, if bishop on e6 it's it's not really a great idea because now queen b7 winning the pawn uh, and after bishop on d5 for example consolidating the position white actually could you know exchange uh, sacrifice the exchange and play c6 and with this bishop this bishop is definitely stronger than the rook so white wouldn't have the problem with winning so uh taking by bishop would be not really great idea queen e6 was played and here feel free to pause the video one more time and find the only winning move for white there is only one winning move the rest moves are probably you know drawish while i enjoy my cup of tea one more time okay so um if you found rook on d8 then congratulations that's the move we are looking for and now of course the uh, queen can't be taken uh, because if queen is taken then rook uh, takes on e8 with check queen can go back to um, g8 but now we would have rook d on d8 uh, and here even bishop on e6 defending the queens first check and after taking on g8 white would just take on a8 and of course um, win the game with the extra rook so uh, definitely was not an option um, other moves uh, for example bishop on d7 definitely doesn't work rook e8 with check um, and then rook on e8 and queen b7 so we already know that now the bishop is under attack so if bishops move then queen a7 and with two extra pawns of course white would win easily uh, other option queen on g8 it also looks uh, promising but it's also losing rook on e8 and the only move queen on e8 and now bishop on c7 and this is a um, very serious threat of winning the queen so bishop e6 but now again queen b7 uh, bishop f7 and now h3 actually black doesn't have any active moves so white can just improve the position uh, h3 king g8 that's the probably only move and rook d7 white can exchange the rooks this fancy way uh, and after bishop on 
uh, e8, then we would have queen on a7. So again, two extra pawns and easy win. Maybe rook on g8 would be the answer, but still the same. Rook on g8 with check, queen g8, and now queen b4. Queen b4, so not exchanging the queens. And now after h6, we could have rook on d6, um, quite strong move. Now we have the threat, and that would be the threat, because um, uh, this bishop would actually, you know, pin the, the pawn. So queen e8, and after queen d4, this threat is still on the board. So bishop e6, uh, preventing, uh, you know, blocking the way of the rook. But now bishop on e5, uh, attacking the g7. And now just force line, uh, exchanging all the pieces on g7. And white definitely stand much better here. Uh, rook d8, threatening the checkmate, but then g4 and white stands much better here. Uh, and of course, uh, win easily. Um, uh, this pawn is under attack. Uh, this is another threat, you know. So black would have a lot of uh, problems here and probably a very passive uh, game. So really, really not an option. Uh, and and yeah, so, so this didn't work. So h6 was played by Mises. And here we have, uh, probably this was the best option and, uh, and you know, queen e8 and uh, bishop on c7 with similar, uh, with similar effects, queen b7, and we already know that continuation that it's much better for, for white. Uh, so Rubinstein could play this, but he didn't go for this. He just improved his position by queen on c3. So pinning this pawn, which can be very important here. Uh, queen g8, that was the possibility, but we already know this variation. Uh, it doesn't work. After rook on d6, we have all of the same. Uh, bishop e5, uh, queen f7, exchanging all everything, and, and white would win. So uh, Mises actually tried to play queen on e7, so attacking the rook and also, of course, defending this rook. So it looks like uh, white are forces to do something about that because it's double attack on the rook. And for the last time in this game, feel free to pause the video and find the crushing move by white while I enjoy my cup of tea for the last time in this game. Okay, ready? So the crushing move is bishop on h4. It's the really the strongest move. And now black just resigned. So uh, Akiba Rubinstein play um, bishop on h4 and Jacques Mises resign the game. And he resigned because it's nothing he can do. For example, queen on h4 would be met with rook on e8, check. And then after king on h7, queen b3. And this is a very serious threat. If bishop d7, still queen g8 with check, king g6, and after rook d6 check, uh, king h5, for example, and queen f7 still with check, king g4, now h3, uh, king g5, and of course checkmate. So um, that would be checkmate. So queen can't take on h4. And if queen on f7, it also looks like, okay, uh, it's much better, but it still doesn't work. After rook on e8, Queen on e8, we would have rook on d8 and pinning the queen with the king uh, as the bishop is on h4. Uh, and yeah, uh, so bishop h4, of course, uh, g5 is impossible to play as this pawn is pinned. 
So um, yeah, that's the game. I hope you enjoy it. So if you like this video, just press like. And for some reason, if you don't like this video, press unlike, leave the comment. What do you think about Akiba Rubinstein saga? It's uh, more interesting now as he's, you know, uh, improve his skills so definitely the best of his career games are coming and yeah if you don't want to miss any parts uh, just press subscribe and one more thing as always i leave the link in the description but also if you are lazy to go to the description you can click over there the link over there and uh, check the analysis on of this game the study of this game in leeches Okay, so um, yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.